Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology, faculty of medicine, Mansoura University. Today, we have an important lecture about general physical examination. Okay, what are the objectives? To know the preparation of the patient for an examination, appearance and connection, body belt, complexion, constitution, gait, vital signs, head and the neck examination, chest, heart and the breast examination, back and the lower limb examination. So all these items included in general examination. Let us start with the pre preparing the patient for an examination. Emotionally, physically, positioning at the track. Emotional by explaining exactly what will occur. You should explain the patient every step in examination. It's her right to know everything about this general physical examination and to take consent, of course. Physical by offering the path through and instruct the patient on how to disrobe and the dawn and exam gown. So you ask her to put off her clothes in the bathroom and wear gown to be ready for examination. Okay? Positioning and the drabbing help patient assume needed exam position and the drab to provide privacy. And of course, it is very important to provide privacy for each woman. Okay, there must be curtain or something to help for this privacy. What are the items of general examination? First, the appearance of the patient. Is a woman is conscious, drowsy, or disturbed consciousness is present or completely alert or there is disturbed consciousness okay so this is the appearance how the patient look patient connected in lines or to monitors or there is mask or chest tube what about the body belt the woman is a slam, normal or obese. How to determine the body belt? By using the equation of body mass index. The weight in kilogram. Okay. You should know the weight in kilogram. And the height in squared meter. Okay. Then the body mass index is measured. We say this lady is underweight if she is below 18.5 she is normal weight if she is ranging between 18.5 up to 24.9 she is overweight if she is ranging between 25 up to 29.9 she is obese if she is 30 by the mass index or greater Okay, and we can classify obesity into three types, class 1, 2, and the morbid obesity. From 30 to 35 is a class 1. So from 35 to 40 is class 2. Above 40 is a morbid obesity. So this is about the body belt. Let us go to the next, which is the complexion or color. Is there is pallor, jaundice, or cyanosis? How to see pallor? As you see here in the picture, in the lower conjunctiva, you can see the pallor. Also, in the inner surface of the lower lip. Jaundice is seen in the sclera, this part. Yellowish discoloration in the sclera is considered the jaundice. What about cyanosis? If there is central cyanosis, it is best seen in the under surface of the tongue or conjunctiva. 
if there is peripheral cyanosis, it is best seen in the type of nose, ear burn or nails. What about constitution? Either feminine constitution or masculine constitution or infantile constitution. What is the difference? Feminine constitution, the pelvic girdle is larger than the shoulder girdle. If you measure the pelvic girdle and shoulder girdle, you will find the pelvic girdle is higher than shoulder girdle. Okay, this is feminine. Also, she has an average height, well-developed female sex character, well-developed breast, feminine fat distribution, and the developed pubic and axillary hair. All of these considered feminine constitution. What about masculine constitution? If you measure the shoulder girdle and the pelvic girdle, you will find in masculine constitution, shoulder girdle is higher than pelvic girdle. Okay? The woman is tall with some male sex character like hirsutism, muscle bulk, and the hoarseness of voice. This is considered masculine constitution. What about infantile constitution? The woman is short, less than 150 centimeters, with underdeveloped female sex character. This is as regard constitution. Let us go to the next, which is the gait. And the, to detect the gait, is it normal or waddling or lamping gait? You should ask the woman to move, to walk, okay? To see the gait and to define if it is normal or waddling or limping. Usually during pregnancy, the gait is okay if there is no problem before. But waddling gait may happen in the late month when head engagement occurs, especially in prime gravida when engagement occurs in the last four weeks of pregnancy. Waddling gait there is spinal lordosis and the abduction of the side. What about limbing gait? Limbing gait may happen if the patient has a poliomyelitis or previous accident and the fracture hip or fracture femur. So she has a limbing gait. And this is very important because she will have an abnormal shaped pelvis, oblique pelvis, okay, which interfere with normal labor. So you may think about the decision of cesarean section because of abnormal shaped pelvis because of this limping. So take it serious. So you should, doc, good doctor is a good observer. So you should observe the gait of the patient. Okay, let us go to the vital signs. Pulse, respiratory rate, blood pressure, temperature. Pulse, the rate ranging between 60 to 100 per minute. And you should know that during the pregnancy, there is some physiological changes. Okay, and the pulse rate may increase by 10 per minute. Okay, due to these physiological changes. And you should notice the rate of the pulse, the rhythm, and the volume. What is the abnormality in pulse? Maybe tachycardia of 100 or bradycardia below 60 or irregular pulse or weak pulse. Okay. What is about the respiratory rate? Normally between 16 to 20 breaths per minute. But you should know that pregnancy is usually associated with hyperventilation due to hormonal changes, due to effect of progesterone, and so on. What about blood pressure? Measure the blood pressure and the no systolic and diastolic. The normal systolic ranging between 90 up to 140. And the diastolic blood pressure ranging between 60 to 90 millimeter. Okay? Above that, is hypertension and hypertension may occur during the pregnancy because occurrence of preeclampsia and second half pregnancy or superimposed preeclampsia 
or essential hypertension. The patient is hypertensive from the start, or the patient complicated by nephritis and has hypertension as a complication of chronic nephritis. So hypertension may be pregnancy induced or coincidental finding or pregnancy aggravated and so on. What about temperature? Temperature in normal ranging between 36.6 up to 37.2 degrees centigrade. Any increase in temperature, you should search for a focus of infection. Okay. Let us go to the next general examination, head examination. Starting from here, Hairline recession, is there is hairline recession, is there is alopecia areata, about face, examination, look at the face and search for hirsutism, acne, malar flush, cyanosis, pallor or jaundice, examination of the mouse for the pallor, cyanosis or dehydration, okay. Eye examination, notice please the puffness of the eyelid because it, it is a sign of chronic nephritis, especially at the early morning. And the lactose is clearer for jaundice, and the cornea and the conjunctiva for anemia or vitamin A deficiency. Vitamin A deficiency associated with signs in cornea. Okay, like ulceration, scarring, and so on. Lymph node examination related to head is, uh, is evaluated for enlargement or any other character. Which lymph nodes? The submandibular one, the preauricular, the postauricular, and the occipital one. Okay. This is as regard head examination. Log, go on to the neck examination. Of course, you first see the thyroid gland. Is it enlarged or not? Is there is nodule in thyroid gland or not? And the look at the neck vein in semi-sitting position. If it is congested, maybe a sign of heart failure. It's very important, especially in cardiac patient and hypertensive patient. Lymph nodes. The neck is examined, the cervical lymph nodes, all groups of lymph nodes should be examined for enlargement. Web neck should be noticed. What is the web neck? Please look to this picture. Skin fold, as you see here, that runs along the sides of the neck, down to the shoulder. Okay, so this is skin fold from the neck down to the shoulder is called web neck. It is a feature of Turner syndrome and Noonan syndrome. What about chest and the heart? Look to the shape of the thorax, thoracic cage. Vision shaped chest is found in rectus. Okay. Lungs is examined for bronchitis, asthma, or emphysema. With using stethoscope, you can find bronchi, crepitation, and so on, decrease the air entry, and so on. Heart is examined for any murmur due to valvular lesion or sign of heart failure and the gallopers. So, Lung and heart is examined very well. Let us go to the next, which is breast examination, breast inspection, breast palpation. Breast inspection, we evaluate breast symmetry and the shape. If there is any swelling, breast mass. And you should notice the signs of pregnancy, like enlargement, fullness, increased vascularity, pigmentation, of primary areola and so on. 
check for any changes in skin color or texture, bitter orange appearance, important. eczema, ulceration, redness, scar of previous surgery, and the durable examination for detection of retraction, protrusion, pressure, or milky discharge. Then go to breast palpation. You can palpate the breast by dividing the breast into four quadrants and another quadrant under the axillary region, the fifth quadrant. Okay? Superficial palpation or light pressure at first to scan for superficial changes. Then proceed to deeper palpation of each of the breasts. You can use any different maneuver like vertical, starting from up down, or circular pattern, or quadrants, as you prefer. But all the whole press should be examined. Then, lastly, gently squeeze the side of the navel to detect the presence of any discharge. Okay, let us go to the next in general examination, which is back examination. Examination of the back is important to detect any spine deformity like scoliosis, kyphosis. In this picture, there is a scoliosis tilt of the spine to one side like that. It's very important and very dangerous during the pregnancy. Associated with abnormal shaped bulbs, also associated with abnormality in the shape of thoracic cleavage. Kyphosis, as you see here, convexity of the spine like that is important also. So, we examine the back for a spine deformity. Presence of a spina bifida, one of the neural tube defects, also could be noticed at present. Examination of costal vertebral vertebral angle. Costal vertebral angle for what? For any mass, any tenderness as in bilonephritis. Lastly, in general examination, we'll do upper and the lower limb examination. Examination of the limbs for muscular development, hirsutism, and the lymph node enlargement, then handy examination by inspection for pathology in the nails, clubbing of finger, or rheumatoid nodules, or any abnormal pigmentation or ulceration. Examination of the lower limb for signs of DVT, like this one, swelling, tenderness, redness, the signs of DVT is very important, especially during the pregnancy, because we can consider pregnancy as a risk factor for DVT. Okay? Also, examine the lower limb for edema and the varicose vein. This is the end of my lecture today. I hope it was clear enough. Okay, this is my box published on Amazon, textbook of obstetric, textbook of gut of gynecology, contraception handbook, multiple choice question book, medical disorder in pregnancy, and the gynecologic oncology book. You can go to Amazon via this link. You can find my box here. And this link belongs to my YouTube channel where you can find many lectures in OB Guide. And this is another scientific site on Blogspot. Belong to me also. You can find it here. Thank you, everybody.